Mask's on. Got it. Remember, I don't want to have to shoot you in the face. Oh, that's so sweet. Compartment syndrome is caused by an increase in pressure within a tissue compartment, which can be the result of trauma, such as in a crush injury, and is primarily a clinical diagnosis. I covered compartment syndrome in a previous video, so in case you missed it, I'll leave the link for it in the description below. But in that video, I never talked about the specific details in regards to measuring compartment pressures and its role in making the diagnosis of compartment syndrome. In short, measuring compartment pressures is never required to make the diagnosis of compartment syndrome. Instead, think of it as supporting evidence. The normal pressure of a tissue compartment falls between 0 and 8 millimeters of mercury. This measurement is usually obtained by placing a needle or another measuring device into the affected compartment and reading the output as pressure in millimeters of mercury. But in patients with findings suggestive of compartment syndrome, we're more interested in the difference between the patient's diastolic blood pressure and the compartment pressures of the affected body part. This is called the delta pressure. Since tissue damage in compartment syndrome is a function of blood flow through that compartment, as the delta pressure becomes smaller, we get a stepwise progression of clinical findings and damage with delta pressures at 30 millimeters of mercury or less strongly suggesting the diagnosis of acute compartment syndrome. In other words, the closer the compartment's pressure is to our patient's diastolic blood pressure, the greater the amount of tissue damage. For example, let's take a patient who has a blood pressure of 120 over 80. In this case, the diastolic blood pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury. If you were to measure the pressure of a limb with suspected compartment syndrome, the higher and closer that measured pressure is to the patient's diastolic pressure of 80, the diagnosis of compartment syndrome and tissue death within that limb becomes more likely. Pain typically develops as tissue pressure reaches between 20 and 30 millimeters of mercury. Capillary blood flow becomes compromised when tissue pressures increase further. And ischemia occurs when tissue pressures further approach diastolic blood pressure. It's important again to remember that making the diagnosis of compartment syndrome is based on signs, symptoms, and overall clinical findings, and that measuring compartment pressures is never necessary to make the diagnosis. So if the mechanism of injury and exam features suggest compartment syndrome, then it's probably compartment syndrome, at least until proven otherwise. And when the diagnosis is still unclear, you could always obtain and use compartment pressures to support your diagnosis, but it's never a definitive factor in your overall clinical impression. And that wraps it up. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to stay up to date when we post more videos like this one.